warm welcome to all of you to the Economic Times Best BFSI Brands 2022. My name is Kavya Archavli, and I am mighty delighted to welcome all of you here to this fifth edition of the Best BFSI Brands, wherein we come together to celebrate and to recognize the amazing organizations that are making a difference in the way they work or in the way the teams, for that matter, come together and create that impact. I'd now like to invite Santosh Nair, Director, ETH, to please come on stage. First, I'd like to express my gratitude to each one of you for joining us today to honor some of the best BFSI brands of the year. On this platform today, we will recognize best BFSI brands who have stayed relevant to their customers even during the pandemic. Our research team has identified 100 brands based on quantitative and qualitative factors, out of which 75 brands have been shortlisted as part of the process, and around 32 brands are present today who will be felicitated this evening. These brands have excelled in providing outstanding digital customer experiences, minimizing cybersecurity threats, and accelerating technological innovation. This listing aspires to celebrate and acknowledge organization for their strategic planning and successful execution. These brands are not just the best in what they do, but they also create a wave of change that makes the industry to follow them. Thank you. Please help me welcome on stage none other, other than Mr. Ganesh Kumar to share his keynote address with all of you. A huge round of applause, please. I chose the topic on payment and settlement systems and what are the challenges which is going to happen, basically because that is going to be one of the future sunshine engine growth areas of the country. It's already started. Uh, in fact, the last decade has been really one where India has been catapulted into being one of the best countries in terms of a ubiquitous bouquet of offerings of retail payment systems. And therefore, this growth in the payment systems has been facilitated only by people like all of you. People who have got an urge, people who have got an innovative mind, people who have come out questioning the norm, and this questioning the norm has actually resulted in India coming out with new products and delivery systems. Can anybody guess and tell me when the first type of paper-based currency note in whatever form came in India. The first currency note was not in the form of a currency note, but was in the form of a promissory note called as the Hundi. All of us have heard about the Hundi. And the first recorded Hundi in India was issued 700 years earlier. Much before Reserve Bank of India was formed much before any central bank in the world was formed. The oldest central bank in the world is actually the, uh, the, the Sw uh, Swedish uh, central bank. Much before central banks were formed, India had its own rudimentary form of currency. Fast forward that to the Reserve Bank, which is only 80 years old uh, uh, or 85 right now. Uh, after the Reserve Bank came into existence, the physical paper note came. Today we are actually staring at the future the future which is not going to be in the form of a paper note. And therefore you will all tell me that it's going to be the central bank digital currency CBDC about which a lot is being uh, uh, written about. But the future is not going to be only the central bank digital currency. It will be central bank currency. It will be central bank digital currency for the near future. And the near future is I don't envisage at the rate at which innovation is happening, at the rate at which all of you are coming out with new products, this central bank digital currency, in my view, will not have a long lifespan. A lifespan of a decade, maybe two decades. By the time the technology will change, something else will come. I only hope we don't go back to barter. But the point is, it will be something new. The younger generation is a generation which is very agile. They don't care. They don't have brand loyalty. They are loyal only for convenience and comfort. So if we are able to develop bands, we are able to develop products, services in the financial sector, which will meet their comfort, which will meet their convenience, we have a place to stay. There is a huge future for the BFSI segment, a huge future for innovators, a huge feature for, future for agile people who have got a, a real bash towards doing something good. Thanks a lot. All the best and see your digital transactions. The interesting fireside chat um, around shaping the future of BFSI and uh, taking a look at the digital tools and technologies for better customer experience. 
And I'm going to quickly hand it over to our session moderator, Vinay, to take it forward from here. Now, just coming to you uh, to start with, how have you seen the digital tools been leveraged to create that differentiator or bridge that gap between our urban customer and a Bharat kind of a segment? On the urban side, you see end-to-end -end digital journeys being reimagined and uh, practically customers you know, can, can sit at home and get their unsecured loans without any physical uh, interface with, with the lender. But when you talk about rural customers, that journey has been from completely physical to now digital. And that's a great step forward. So I think it's been a material shift that we have witnessed uh, you know, in these rural geographies, rural customers, which has actually helped the overall financial inclusion imperative. You know, when you talk about uh, small finance banks, whether you talk about lending through micro, you know, the microfinance, erstwhile customer segments, or even SMEs mm. today, uh, all that is being possible because of uh, adoption of these digital tools. Manish, coming to you, when we see Video KYC, Video KYC, there are innovations around Video KYC. Video KYC came a year before pandemic stuck us. How do you see and how have you leveraged this new uh, component into your customer experience, especially during the onboarding side of the journeys? What RBI has done and other regulations have done, enough pipes and protocols are built in India. A good innovator has to just ride on top of it. I think you have to do two things well in India. One, understand your customer well. And second, understand what I think regulator always allowed. I think these two things can give you enough, I will say, tools to innovate. But today, if you see the world, you're always realizing that most of our thing in life has become video based, right? So what we thought in, in AU and our CEO said, ki, video pe account khol sakte hai, to bhi branch nahi kar sakte, right? Ki pehle branch bhi account khulne jate the. So we challenge ourselves when we see why can't a simple video uh, can be used as a branch? And that's, I'll say, innovation which we do in AU. And thanks to video KYC norms, RBI already said what three, four, five extra things you can do to authenticate the customer is genuine record, right? So today we have enabled 300 plus features on our uh, video branch, where obviously cash we are not able to solve right now, uh, but except cash, what we do in a branch can happen here. Last closing comments, uh, Raul, with you, if there are two key transformation levers you see futuristically, which can transform the customer experience from digital perspective, which one would be those? Metamorphizing a branch, a Mahindra Finance branch, to be a branch of the future, to be a branch wherein we would have a kiosk, which customers would be able to come in and do uh, self-service journeys and or assisted journeys would be uh, for me the biggest uh, wow factor. Manish, over to you. At the AU Bank, I'll say one is the video is one of the big differentiator which I see and I see slowly lots of people will adopt that as a one of the business channel to handle the customer. I think that's one area will come. Bankers are still not be taught how what to do with uh, the crypto, uh, the digital currency and the metaverse. I think that's an area which will evolve in a great way. Thank you, Manish. Thank you, Raul, for this uh, engaging discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, time for the panel discussion around BFSI transformation with a focus on digital resilience. As an opening uh, comments, Pradeep, uh, to start with you, what is your view on how digitalization is taking shape in India? What are the key drivers, challenges? I think initially, the industry started with physical and outcry system and then gradually moved to technology and technological platform. And I think in past decade, if you really see a huge big change has started happening. And that's where you started looking at complete automation. Uh, and that automation again was largely towards operations. And that is where you started having smoothening the transactions uh, in capital market as well as, uh, you know, uh, electronic transfers in a very, very crude manner. And then now we have started talking about AI and ML. And it's going to play a huge big role to my mind. I think that's where you started creating a big, uh, big technological platform where you are trying to understand the customer. And the second uh, immediate uh, revolution is going to happen because of uh, cryptocurrency, you know. I think that world is going to be complete fascinating. I'm not advocating cryptocurrency, but the technology which is bringing in the cryptocurrency, I think one has to look at that, which is blockchain technology. Such in your views. 
you know, our customers earn in cash and therefore they prefer to pay in cash and deal in cash. And therefore, you know, most of our apps which we have launched on the collection side, if I have to give you some data in terms of uh, before March 2020, before the pandemic came in, uh, we had a few thousand downloads and hardly any traction as far as transactions on that app was concerned. And our front end was also oriented more so to collect cash because that's how business has been traditionally been done. And then came the pandemic, then came the lockdown, then came social distancing. And uh, what we saw was that our front end orientation changed because of the distancing norms. They started getting in touch with the customer, not physically, but in all other modes. And we had 52% of our customers downloading the app, which means almost half a million customers who downloaded during that period. Anil, uh, you've seen uh, world outside as well as world in India, right? What is your view on India's level of digitalization and what's happening here? The first thing about India is we have the most sophisticated and most evolved ecosystem. Um, and I come, I've spent a 15 to 18 years of my life doing financial services in the US. And uh, the ecosystem that has been enabled by the government and the regulator here is Parnan. And even though a lot of startups like ourselves, fintech companies want to call ourselves disruptor, I think that tag truly belongs to the regulator and government in India. They are the disruptors in chief. If you today want to make a payment in US, it takes five days for you to know whether your payment has cleared or not, even though all of it is probably a digital deposit. But in India, we know it instantly. And we should really commend our governmental organization and the regulator for providing that infrastructure <laughs> for helping fintech companies like ourselves to innovate and build on it. Uh, Rishi, to you. How do you see this entire transformation happening over the last two years? The last 15, 16 years and especially in the last six, seven years, the infrastructure which got created around smartphones, the entire KYC revolution which has happened, has transformed the utility of a payments bank. Apart from the fact that uh, we, we brought in a lot of convenience to the customer, as payments bank, our model is to go to the customer at his doorstep rather than ask him to travel a few kilometers to come to a branch. Or, or come to an ATM. So we are present in almost 94% of the districts in the country. The idea is to bring convenience, simplicity. Convenience in that he can come anytime and do transaction whether through a digital platform or through a merchant ecosystem which we have created. And simplicity, the entire KYC revolution, the entire ease of running an app and intuitively able to do transactions has transformed the entire digital uh, uh, transformation, not only in the urban India, but in rural India. Fino is largely a rural India company. We are 70% present in rural India. We have seen the transformation happening. So thank you, thank you uh, very much uh, uh, to really, uh, you know, spend your time and come here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. With that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, truly delighted to have the presence of one of the most renowned fashion designers of our country. Well, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have with us none other than Masaba Gupta. I'm going to plug in a quick question with regard to the fact that you have a profitable business, a very thriving business, a very inspiring one. How do you manage the business of finance? I think it was, it was a hard but uh, an important knock that I had to take. And I think more than anything, uh, I think it's very important to know your finances purely because you should know the only thing is not putting good money after bad. I think that's the one thing I've learned in, in these 12 years of running the business. And if you understand numbers, you understand your growth trajectory. So I think that's just been my journey with finance. It's actually solved a lot of problems for me. And I think finance is just that. It's about problem solving. We're talking about businesses over here. And we realize that businesses and partnerships for that matter, you know, Forming that strong alliance is really, really crucial. What are the parameters that go into your mind? So, you know, I think we must have done about 30, 35 odd collaborations. And the only thing that I've learned is that you have to be very clear about what's a marketing gimmick and what's a sales gimmick, you know. And I think that was a great understanding for me. Uh, the second thing I learned is that when you have two people that are coming together, uh, it's not necessary that you know as much as they do or they know as much as you do. But the fact of the matter is that brands that have been around for years and years, for decades, 
also finally need somebody young to reach out to the new consumer, you know. And uh, I think from there you get your strength to really understand that when two brands come together, if you do what you do best and they do what they do best, that's a true marriage um, when it comes to a collaboration. Thank you so much for sharing your nuggets of insights. And with that, what we're going to do is kickstart with the felicitations. What I'm also going to do is invite on stage Mr. Prashant Nair, Director ETH. Can we have a huge round of applause to also welcome Mr. Prashant Nair on the stage? And first up, before we get started with the felicitations, we also have the launch of the Coffee Table book that features the success stories of these amazing brands. First up, let's hear it for Anand Rati Drew. Let's also now move ahead and let's invite the next brand that's being felicitated this evening. Let's hear it for Anapurna Finance Private Limited. Let's hear it for AU Small Finance Bank Limited. So let's have a huge round of cheer and let's hear it now for Fino Payments Bank. And let's hear it for Flex Pay India. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now hear it for Hinduja Leyland Finance. And let me now invite uh, ICICI Lombard General Insurance Company. And let's hear it for Market Simplified India Limited. Let's hear it for Orange Retail Finance India Private Limited. And let's invite the next brand, Yono SBI. Customer centric approach is very critical and uh, it has to be an optimal combination of technology as well as human touch. If I have to say the new technology which can be a game changer, uh, basically if I talk about an MFI, MFI segment, so the collection has to be automated and uh, predictive analytical tool and use of Aadhaar, uh, Natch, these will be very very critical for the uh, collection part. Uh, with this pandemic, I think the overall process has changed and the way we used to operate in MFI. So earlier it was more of a human touch and now we have to look at a new way of uh, doing our business which is more into digital. See, we have been into digital transformation for the last 16 years. Uh, we saw this uh, uh, transformation coming at some point of time. Uh, and during the pandemic, it became all the more necessary for people to move away from paper and into the digital world. So this helped us uh, grow our company from what we were in 2018-19 to post-pandemic and where we are today. Since beginning, uh, we have created this brand across and around the customers. So customer centric brand and we believe in relationship. It's with customers along with our people who are bringing and getting these services to our customers. So wherever we feel the customer needs are there, we understand the customers really well and try to build the brand. And that's the reason uh, our customers really weigh our brand and recognize our brand constantly because their needs are being satisfied in the manner they want it to be. 
and uh, requirement are being met based on their requirement that's what we are we believe in relationships and our whole team also believe in relationships so that's where keeping the customer first creating those relationships understanding the customer well and then our own people with them also we create a relationship from a long term perspective so that all the three people which is our customer our people and us are delivering and selling in the same boat i think as a customer centric brand we have focused on technology on digital first initiatives on innovations in fact our flagship i'll take care mobile app we were amongst the first in the industry to launch that and we have in fact transition from a mere transactional partner of an insurer and traverse now to transitioning with our customers and partnering with them as a well-being partner so we actually now provide not just curative or preventive but actually the entire holistic health and wellness solutions brand orange process empathy driven approach and it's been positioned well as household brand with neighborhood financial attitude our fintech way of digital experience to our customers helped us to gain the top of the mind brand recall our core strategy of continuous engagement and life cycle management of our customers build the brand confidence as well nevertheless orange is the mobility and livelihood partner of rural india uh, for us as a digital lender um, which is focused on consumers with limited access to credit it was the pandemic was not as much about tweaking anything it's more about um understanding that the product and the consumer experience we put together became more relevant and when we talk about being a digital lender and being a mobile first company uh the fact that now all our consumers um kind of appreciate a digital onboarding process and our uh, uh product which is uh called flex pay for many reasons mainly because it's flexi- flexible that allows the customers to access credit anywhere uh at any time and also more importantly gives them the flexibility to repay one thing what has happened in pandemic is everyone has financial obligations that they have to pay their emis but all of a sudden when your income sources dwindle away having a emi to pay can be really stressful and our product always was a emi free product so our customers then started to appreciate that hey there is this product which is an emi free product and i decide how much to pay when to pay how to pay is a big advantage what we have embarked over the last period is to look at you know achieving our mission of looking at garnering or cornering higher wallet share of our customers which are basically customers in the commercial vehicle space now how we are going about it is that during the pandemic and you know in fact prior to that we started off and during this period we have been able to develop solutions and products for basically aimed at all the needs of the commercial vehicle customers wherein we have developed uh, our you know capabilities and solutions to for establishing a freight aggregating platform which basically gets the SMEs and the corporates to place the freight and the truckers and the transporters to bid for it all these capabilities all this have been developed in a digital format in last two years specifically during the pandemic they were tough but uh, as a bank we have been always focused on building a retail granular uh, liabilities franchise we were always uh, uh, one of the leading retail franchises on the asset side but during this tough time we uh, on the asset side we stood with the customer on ground uh, thanks to all the policies from reserve bank of india and government of india that we were able to give solutions to our customers we increased our footprints uh, across india increased our physical reach but at the same time the significant investment which we did was building our digital properties we launched our au 0101 uh, digital identity a super app last year which we believe uh, we will all into a independent digital bank over the coming uh, you know next 5 years period of time we have always uh, you know been a organization which has kept the customer in the focal area or the focus point of the entire activity whether it is product process communication engagement uh, uh, so to ensure that we are able to create a value for the customer our brand promise was born out of an insight that what the consumer really needs is reassurance and confidence and that's very very true for the financial services world and this became even more critical in the pandemic where you really had to reassure 
the market out there, the consumer that we are hamesha available for them. In the last some time, in fact, you know, whether it was the pandemic or even the post-pandemic world, we have significantly upped our marketing game. Uh, whether it is the use of OTT, uh, social media, you know, YouTube, print, television, uh, you know, various alternate channels, we've gone out and really communicated to the consumer this core proposition that look, no matter what, the brand is available for you. And that has really helped them come up the curve. And this is something that we always tell everyone that you know, the sentiment that we hence leave our consumers as well as our distribution partners is that whenever you work with us, the whole sentiment will be ficker not which is essentially what Fino means.